welcome to the farm. Today we're talking, you've married the farmer, now what? And my guest today is Kerry. Welcome, Kerry. Thank you. Nice to be here. Very exciting. Kerry, can you please start by telling us who you are, where you come from, and your farming operation? Um, yeah, well, I'm Kerry McKinnon, um, married to my husband, Raymond. We've been together for 28 years and married for 26, which has gone really, really fast. Um, we live in the southwest of Victoria um, on our um, family sheep and cattle um, property. So we're a, um, we're a family enterprise. So my husband farms with his two brothers um, and we've got three, well, adult kids. Um, Blake's nearly 25. Brianna's just gone 23 and Adam's about to turn 20 because our boys' birthdays are like three days apart. So, um, and they all work on the farm as well beside their dad. Mm. Perfect. That's mm. really yeah, good. That's yeah. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's good. I think our eldest will probably, he's thinking about branching out and moving to Melbourne for a bit, um, which, you know, we fully support anything they obviously want to do. And, and um, so that's a bit exciting for him. So. We do have Caroline here with us again in the studio as we are chatting uh, for this episode. So if you hear any babbling or some little coughs, that's her here with us. So before we continue on with this episode, I'd love to give a shout out to this episode's supportive link, Tupperware. Tupperware has been a companion of the farmer for decades, whether we're running lunch down the paddock or trying to store anything leaf leak proof and sealed in our fridge in the containers or making things easier for food prep and storage, Tupperware is there with a product for you. So please see the link in the show notes below and pick yourself up some Tupperware. So, Kerry, on a daily basis, tell me about the roles and the tasks that you do for your family and your family farm. Um, so I'm pretty much the full-time, I suppose, cook, I suppose, because they um, they work obviously close to home. So I do all all the meals. I feel like I cook all the time. Like that's what I do is cook. And I love being outside too, so I try and get out, whether it's sort of to check the cows calving or um, even I love going around the paddocks when the ewes are lambing as well. Um, but the majority of the time nowadays, um, I'm cooking for everybody. So I send Smoko off with them or they'll come back for Smoko if they're close to the house working. Um, and then obviously lunch. Um, and then I feel like I get all that sorted and it's time to think about tea. So, mm -hmm. um, yep, yep. And then it's just sort of, you know, um, doing the town runs and stuff like that, like we all have to for obviously grocery orders and I feel like I'm doing that constantly too and anything else like, you know, farm supply stuff, feed, um, parts, all that sort of, yeah, fun stuff. So, so that's pretty well my role nowadays. It's changed a little bit from because I used to sort of, be in town a fair bit, um, but nowadays I obviously prefer to be <laughs> prefer to be home now. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. a lot easier. Mm. And so, yeah. what's the favourite meal that you like to send down the paddock with everybody? I always find quiches easy. Yeah. Um, but then Brianna, our daughter, is not overly keen on that. So, um, but I usually just do a like baking and stuff like that and I'll send that obviously with smokos and um the boys love um like um egg and bacon sort of toasties and stuff like that with um um spinach and that sort of stuff they love that sort of thing as well so yeah it sort of changes a little bit and we eat a lot of um lamb obviously being sheep farmers we eat a lot of lamb as well yeah um so I'm always doing something with with that as well so yeah it sort of changes up I try and keep it a little bit here if I can you tend to go back to the same recipes as well so yeah yeah, so, yeah. and what does dinner usually look like um oh, it's the same. I try, try and keep that sort of um a little bit varied as well but um 
you know, usually sort of we have either salad or veggies sort of for lunch and then again for tea. Um, I don't know, it changes up all the time pretty much. Um, yeah. yeah, I actually made pasta yesterday, which I was very proud of. So we had yeah. we had we made pasta for tea last night and that was amazing. Yeah. 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 It's always amazing how yeah. different it is when you make homemade pasta. Oh, I never realised, I never made it before and then I thought I'm going to give this a try and it took, like it's labour intensive but so worth it. (laughs) Kerry, when you first moved to the farm, you said that your roles have changed over the years. So thinking back to when you first moved to the farm, what were the surprises and hurdles of moving there? I think sort of getting used to being in that family farming um, space like it can be they've got their own way of doing things and they've done it that way for generations and just getting used to all of that I suppose too I didn't find it hard or um anything like that I think I just I don't know I loved it like from the very beginning I just loved it and um my mum was actually really worried when I first got married thinking oh my gosh it's almost like I moved to the ends of the earth and and um you know out here all by yourself type thing which obviously our husbands are always around and back then we relied a lot on the UHF radio in the house and the utes but no I I have never felt isolated or lonely or yeah I've loved it so I didn't really sort of I don't recall any real hurdles um from memory unless I've blocked them out but yeah (laughs) (laughs) no I would say I sort of integrated pretty well I thought so yeah into it all so yeah and what were the living circumstances when you first moved to the farm? Um, yeah, so we've got quite a few houses on the property. So we, before we got married, Raymond and his brothers and his his father, um, he's since passed away. He they renovated um, and did up one of the old houses on the property. So we moved into that, and I thought it was wonderful. And um, yeah, it was just a really enjoyable time. And then we outgrew it, and usually out here properties don't come up for sale because they're all family run and um or family owned and run and um we were lucky enough that a fella had come out and wanted to go farming so bought a house and land here and then he decided he wanted to go fishing again so he sold that and so we we grabbed the house and the land and that's where we are now because it was a four bedroom home and we needed it for our yeah gro- <laughs> rapidly growing family mm. yeah yeah. But the only thing it doesn't connect Yeah, it doesn't connect um sort of straight up to our the rest of the property. There's a, a small um bit of land owned by somebody else in between us, so and then we join up again. So but it's it was worth it for the yeah, the space, the house. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Do you, yeah. you mentioned that it was sort of a, a seamless transition to being there and you've loved loved being there was there anything Mm. that you either think now or when you were younger that you kind of wish you knew before moving to the farm or before moving you know in with your husband Um, a little bit more how family family the dynamics of a family farming enterprise work maybe that um because it's sort of getting to the stage now where the boys are wanting to sort of branch out on their own and stuff like that so in the early days when they're all young it all worked fine um everything was you know and they still do work well together but they're I think they're, they've got their own ideas now they sort of wanting to sort of you know change a few things so apart from just that yeah that dynamic of obviously living and working you know um where you live well, where you live basically like everybody's sort of just there together <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I think. tell me a little bit more about that because every, as you know, and as you've said, every family farming operation is so different. So tell me mm. a little bit about how yours is set up and how that works. What, Raymond's got um, three brothers. One brother's left the farm and moved to town um, quite a long time ago. Another mar- another brother's not married. Um, he lives in the main house and then um, Raymond's youngest brother and his family live on another. Um, so we're all yeah, not very far apart, but by road it's, you know, takes enough time. But, um, yeah, so they just sort of run everything pretty much together. But then nowadays it's sort of become sort of where each of the boys live. They look after that area and um, 
Raymond and the kids have got quite an area sort of to look after and um, and run and that sort of stuff. And, and we've got a lot of sheep. I think we've got um, about 10,000 ewes, so first cross ewes that um, we put whole dorset rams over, so we produce a fat lamb. And also cattle, we've got cattle. Um, we buy in steers to fatten and then sell down the track. And we've also got breeders as well. And um, we've also got a mob of Brahmin cattle, which is not really seen down here. Brahmins are not um, a breed people run down here. Mm. Yeah. So that was my hobby. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> mm. And it's grown over sort of 12 years. We've, bro- we've grown the mob and, um, yeah, I love them. Mm. Yeah. And people people notice them down here. It's quite funny, whereas sort of up north they a dime a dozen, I guess, where down here it's like, oh, my goodness, there's Brahmin in the ca- in the paddocks. Like, it's yeah, it's quite a talking point. Kerry, were you ever given a piece of advice that you reflect on, you know, daily or um, when you were moved to the farm? To tell you the truth, I don't think I was given any advice when I moved here. I think it was just like sink or swim, basically. and I don't know I just learned as I went along I honestly did like I think like I came from town originally um I mean obviously it's not no town around here is very big but um I think my father was born and bred on the farm and I think I sort of had that in me so um I mean he left the farm when he was a teenager the family moved but I think I always had that in me so I've always had the love of the bush in me anyway so I I don't know I think I just did things my own way as well I um I don't recall anybody sort of really giving me any sort of um advice that I can remember. If you saw someone moving to the farm for the first time, whether it was a daughter-in-law or just someone moving in down the road, would you have advice for them that would be helpful? Um, there's probably a few things. I think one of the one of the things is too is is um As far as, you know, like we say, where there's life on a farm, there's death on a farm. Um, And I think particularly us as females, we get very upset if we lose, you know, pet lambs, calves. And I think, honestly, that's something that you can't just switch off. It's something that you just learn as you go along. Um, I mean, I used to get upset if I lost a lamb. And now I just get disappointed thinking, damn, I just put all that work into you and you turned around and, you know, and died on me. But um, I think that and just the fact that, no matter how house proud you are, you're never going to have a totally clean house. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we've got a back room where all the boots and coats and um, our daughter's um, saddles and bridles because she she rides and my husband does too. It's all out in that back room and I'll mop it, clean it, and then literally like a whirlwind in they come and it's like, well, I don't know why I bother sometimes. <laughs> and like, well, obviously our toddlers or little kids. And um, I think that too just sort of embrace the dirt basically because it's there it's going to always be there um and there's not much you can do about it I think just keep on top of it as best you can but I think just don't get too hung up on it I think Um, yeah yeah, um and I think the biggest thing is to is um try and get a try and take a holiday um off the farm as well because as much as we love the farm you really do need to get off the farm um and we are really lucky we take a two-week holiday every every year so sort of um once the hay's done and then sort of before um you know sort of before dagging starts you know before um lambing we sort of take a two-week holiday and we've done that ever since we were together and we've just kept that kept that going I think that's really important Enjoy cooking as well. Research your recipes um, because you're always going to have to feed them. <laughs> and, they, yes. and if they stay around like our kids have, you'll be feeding them for a while. <laughs> yeah. That and probably just the fact that, you know, be prepared that people, you know, will call in, stock agents come and go, um, you know, wool buyers, that sort of stuff. So it's always good to have maybe some extra smoke on hand just because you just don't know who or, or a neighbour up the, you know, from up the road. Well, I mean, we've only got, I think, two, two neighbours, but um that are super close but you just yeah have something sort of on hand because they'll drop in when you least <laughs> least expect it so yeah yeah I think and just enjoy it I think is another thing too just I don't know embrace it as well 
you know, um, it can change at a drop of a hat on the, you know, life on the land. So I think you just got to um, just learn to sort of deal with what comes your way and be flexible. Hmm. They all sound like uh, lessons learnt along the way. Yeah. Do you have any other yeah. lessons that you learnt that you believe are important for daily operation of the farm? Always try and keep like the pantry staples um, sort of updated. So so it's so easy to run out of things, but town is so far. So you just um, just you, you know, and bread in the freezer and stuff like that. I've always tried to do that, and we always have plenty of meat, obviously, in the freezer as well. But um, and another thing which my husband actually said to me many many years ago is always keep the car half full or quarter full because you never know when you might have to leave in a hurry or and he's always said to me do not let it get below quarter of a tank at least because you just you know you just don't know I think oh another thing too is if you're drinking your rainwater which we did for years right when the kids were little um it's and I, I learned probably this the hard way too is get your rainwater tested because the amount of bacteria, which I never thought, my husband was raised on rainwater as well, and never even gave it a thought until we got our rainwater that we were drinking. Because we have rainwater into the house, but we kept a tank for drinking water. We had it tested and it was absolutely filled with bacteria. So we had to change that. So I think that's a that's a less definitely a lesson learned that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think. I don't know just even like it's good to have routine especially when your kids are babies and stuff like that but I think you have to learn to be flexible still at the same time um yeah. you know if hubby needs to be picked up down the paddock or something run down there or stuff like that I think it's something that you've just got to get you know get used to and just think radio yeah I can leave what I'm doing and you know and go for 20 minutes and it'll be fine <laughs> yeah I think so yeah this oh when I think about it, there is a lot of lessons I've learned over the years I guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that moves us seamlessly oh, into what? sort of that next question which is top tips for parents on the land involve your kids involve your kids in what you're doing um Raymond was always really good even when the kids were little he would um take them put the booster seat in the ute and off they'd go depending on what he was doing obviously if he was doing cattle work no um but yeah, just because they learn so many life lessons in their own backyard, basically. Um, so I think it's really important. Like we have take, always taken our kids everywhere with us. Um, and I don't know, we've just always been used to that. And it's quite funny now because the kid's like, did you realise that you two can go off and do things yourselves? Like we're fine. It's just We've always been used to taking them with us. Um, but yeah, I think just... Um, yeah, really involve the kids and because you really will be surprised how much they pick up. Um, even the paddock names, you know, all sorts of stuff. They they learn from such an early age and they remember it um, as well. So just, you know, pack a bag, some snacks and off you go. So, um, and it means that, I don't know, we feel involved as mums as well. So tell me what's in Ooh. your go bag. Well, I didn't actually... Um, have one as such but I would just always make sure that um, and <laughs> Raymond would always take like a nappy bag with him like the kids were toddlers and stuff but always have you know this the spare change of clothes and if they were still in nappies which quite often they were and he would still take them with him um, and you know and just some snacks obviously because once they get hungry they really get hungry don't they so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um that's probably yeah, um, probably I'd say. Oh, and obviously water. Pl always have plenty of water. Yeah, with the kids. Um, but yeah, we've just—I don't know—we've just always had them with us. Yeah, and um, and the kids have, you know, yeah, always been with dad. Mm. Was there any Sorry. methods that you used in particular to keep them sort of safe and secure while they're working with you? I think just common sense, honestly. Um, don't you know you, you just don't put them in situations I suppose that it could possibly be harmful because they're not going to know when they're only young so um and then as they get older obviously you know you can talk to them about it and Raymond's always been really good um as far as safety goes and stuff like that as well so um not over the top because they still have to learn as well but to, yeah to keep them safe obviously um 
yeah, we just, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I suppose they've survived for now. So we must have sort of done, <laughs> we're just trying to think back, sort of like, yeah, like, I don't know, Raymond just, I, I remember one time he said he, he um, <laughs> I can't remember how old Blake was, um, our eldest, and I think he must have seen a fox across the paddock. And so he let his, because he's, he's always had hunting dogs as well as Kelpies and stuff. And now our youngest son is exactly the same. And um, you can't let a fox get away. So he, yeah, he saw this fox. So he put the dogs after it and he was running across the paddock and the paddock was pretty rough and he went down with it with Blake holding on to Blake. And, and um, I think they must have been talking about it recently because Blake only mentioned it to me the other day about dad falling over when he, he was running with me. So, I mean, yeah, but he was fine. Like he was, he was fine. But um, yeah, we've socks? not had um, I can't really remember. I'll have to ask. <laughs> I'll have to ask him that one. He never used to like to get a fox, a fox to get away. So yeah, he's always had pretty handy dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Life balance on the farm is a question I get asked about quite often over on uh, my Instagram page as well as yeah. questions after the podcasts go live. So do you believe yeah. in a work life balance, and how does that look for you and your family? Yeah, I do. Um, because it's so easy for the fellas to just work, work, work. And I think once you have children that start to go to kindy and school, like our kids still went to town to kindy. My husband never went to kindy, went straight to school. But um, our kids went for, I think it was two full days a, a week. So as soon as they start to sort of get involved in that, I suppose, more so when they start primary school where they've got sports days and we have district sports and stuff, um be involved in that too I really think it's important for the dads because you see so many country mums just rolling up just the mums no dads and I that was one thing that Raymond was really really good at um was he always made sure he went to every sports day every district sports day um he's always been really involved in our daughter's riding because she's done a lot of competing um he was a coach at pony club um a games coach and um, always very, very involved in, you know, helping her at home with her horses and stuff. Really involved in our son's younger son's football, has never missed a football match. Um, and our eldest son um, is in more involved nowadays with um, gaming production. So he's actually made his own games and he had one picked up by Nintendo and um, he – Raymond knows nothing about that sort of stuff. Yeah, he's, he was so proud of him. He did an amazing job. Um, but Raymond knows nothing about computers, nothing like that, but he still made the effort to try and understand, you know, about it. I don't think he still does, but he still talks to him about it. So, so yeah, he's. I think it's important just for – because our kids grow up way too fast. Um, so I think the dads need to be involved just like mums. Yeah, I think. And um, – and Raymond would still come home after a busy day and still help me bath the kids, read them books and put them to bed and that sort of stuff. So I really appreciated that. Um, and even now, the, the age the kids are, he's still really involved with them. So I think, yeah, it's just not all us mums. It needs to be the dads as well. Um, I know there's so much work to do and it doesn't stop, but like we know. Um, but, you know, your kids have to have preference as well. So mm, I think that's really important. Yeah. And taking that, like I said, taking that holiday as well, yeah. Because we would talk about holidays and Raymond would say, no, oh, I've got this to do and that to do and that's got to be done first before we can go out. And I'm right, right, give me a ballpark date. And he'll sort of say around about and I'll say, right, okay, it's getting booked. And I book it and tell him and then we, yeah, we go. Because if I didn't, he would just keep working. Yeah. Mm. What other preparations do you put in place for when you go away? Do you get someone to look after the place for you, check in, move in? What's your setup like for that? Yeah, so my brother-in-law comes and feeds our dogs um, and just checks checks the place. And we've got a wonderful neighbour um, who he just – because where we are, we're quite um, – the entrance to our property is quite isolated – so um, he just would drive past and just check everything as well. And um, he's wonderful and we do the same for him. Um, but, yeah, my, my brother-in-law will come down and feed and just sort of, um, you know, put his eye over the horses and stuff like that too. And 
Um, and it, we sort of try and go away. This year we actually went to Queensland, which was really lovely, and then we came back and took the caravan just down to the coast, which is about an hour away. Um, because Raymond doesn't like to be away for too long, particularly that time of the year, just in case it's a fire or something. But we had a very, very wet summer. Um, we didn't really even dry off um, here. It was everything just sort of, it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's always really good. We, like he always, my brother-in-law always looks after, yeah, like I said, the dogs. And we've got another fella that's friends with us. He'll, he'll pop in as well and just sort of check on everything as well. So, yeah. We're surrounded by really good people. Did you have any top tips for drought or wet seasons or even fires, if you've just mentioned, during fire season? Well, fires is our biggest risk. Um, we, I think, I think I've just got used to it over the years and I, uh, summer's, yeah, summer's quieter, obviously for everybody is a worrying time. Um, but we, my husband's involved in the, the rural fire brigade here as well and um so the, the he's gone like if there's if there's a, a whiff of something he's gone they've got they seem to have a really good system worked out between the whole district and you know they just all get together which obviously other districts that people do too but um they just don't let anything get hold they've gone even if it's a you know um if the smoke's called and they get there and there's nothing there it doesn't matter you know but he will literally drop in everything and and go um and our younger son's sort of involved um a bit as well but um we are really really blessed where we live that we don't touch wood suffer from drought or flooding we're extremely lucky here um we obviously do dry out through the summer months, but it doesn't get to the point where there's no feed. Um, we always keep a supply of hay. We do our own hay. Um, so that's always on hand for the, you know, the drier summers. But like I said, this past summer, we literally just did, we still had rain through summer. We didn't dry off, um, which then can be a problem, obviously, with Barber's Pole with the sheep, but we thankfully haven't had um, any real problems with that. Um, we've had just it's been really wet it's been wet through summer right through and we were supposed to apparently have a wet winter uh, sorry a dry winter that not happened yeah. <laughs> it's been raining every day <laughs> yeah no it is, it is good it's it'll be nice to see some sunshine eventually but i mean and like i said flooding wise we we don't it doesn't flood we are naturally the country here is very flat, so we have sort of what we call swamps in the paddock that will fill up with water through the winter time. But that's just a natural, that's just what it does every year. Um, yeah, so we're extremely blessed that we don't sort of have to have those. Uh, Kerry, that comes to the end of all my official questions. Was there any other informational topics that you wanted to cover that you thought would be helpful for those moving to the farm? I think a big one that not talked about is succession and that really fascinates me um how the different particularly obviously farming families handle their succession um because we're sort of going to be heading in that direction obviously um at you know soon as well so um and it's it's a really sticky subject because a lot of particularly farmers and the older generation of farmers don't like to talk about it you don't talk about you know money or anything like that they just it's sort of almost a taboo subject so um yeah so that's a I always find that a, a really interesting um topic but it it is hard to get people to talk about particularly even in your own family which you know um there's some good podcasts that I've listened to about it and stuff like that but I love Wild Spark it's actually it's um Danielle Doyle she runs that and she's an absolute card she is just wonderful um i listen to all theirs um they've had a bit of a break from them but they're back um oh, i listen to motherland um life on the land um oh god ducks on the pond there's quite a few yeah. and yeah that cover some really amazing um subjects that in the past just there wasn't really anything out there farm wise like there was sort of um you listen to the country hour on the ABC and stuff like which I used to always listen to and backwards and forwards to town. But now there's just a wealth of stuff out there um, about life on the farm, and I love listening to other people's um, situations um, as well. I find it really fascinating as well. So um, 
but yeah I think it's just I don't know love the life we live I guess and make the most of it and um because honestly I feel like I've sneezed and 26 years has, has gone by like it's it's just crazy where it's yep. gone so I think just enjoy it as you know obviously things come up um they always will come up on the land and when you've obviously when you've got a, fa a family as well but um yeah just enjoy it as much as you can so Thank you much, Kerry, for joining us on So You've Married a Farmer, Now What? Anything that has been mentioned during today's episode will be linked in the comments section below. If you are looking for more tips, tricks and hacks, please do review the other interviews that we have done on this channel as well as joining us over on our Instagram page. We are quite active there and love participation, so please always pop in for a chat. Until next time, thank you very much for joining us here on the farm.